It's Sunday night once again. Scorecard is live on your screens. We are here on City TV. My name is Benjamin Inketiat. Good to be here. Um, the text and WhatsApp lines are on your screens. Talk to me about your weekend. Um, let me find out exactly what you've been up to. Um, Manchester United fans obviously are over the moon after beating the Swan rival Liverpool. Um, the African games are still happening right here in Ghana. Team Ghana were up to a few things as far as arm wrestling was concerned, racking up 40 medals in the process. And so um, it is propped up Ghana on the medal table. I'll be telling you a lot about that. Boxing has been happening over the weekend as well. The likes of uh, Joseph Komi and Samuel Tichi have all been uh, in action. But the biggest piece of news this um, last 48 hours leading to today is the fact that the Ghana Football Association have named a successor for Chris Hilton. Um, no prizes for guessing. Otto Addo is back for a second stint as Black Stars head coach. What has generated even more controversy is the composition of his backroom staff. Joseph uh, Lauman uh, from Standard Liège uh, also worked with Barnsley and a couple of other teams as a development manager himself. And then um, ex Black Stars right fullback John Painto, as far as, uh, as, as well as uh, Fatal Dada, who's working as a goalkeeper's trainer. So uh, we'll dissect that as well on the show. Coach Christopher Nimli uh, is here. Edwin Kwakofi of City Sports also here as well. Let me know what you make of that Ottawa appointment and also the composition of his backroom staff. We'll do a quick turnaround. When we come back, I'll introduce the gentleman properly and then we'll start discussing. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. My people are here, Edwin Kwakofi and Coach Christopher Nimli. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. It's good to be back, man. Right. Let's get it right on the road. No <laughs> mincing words here. Um, the Black Stars of Ghana have a new technical team. Otoado, former uh, player, uh, former Black Stars coach, took Ghana to the World Cup. Uh, he's back to lead the team again. There's a World Cup qualifier around the corner. There are friendly matches around the corner. Otoado um, has named Joseph Lauman as his assistant and... As the FA does, they pick two other um, coaches down here to assist the team. Uh, they have touched uh, Fatal Dauda, ex Black Stars goalkeeper himself, to be um, goalkeeper's trainer. So he replaces Olile Richard Kinson. And then um, John Pinsel comes in. So John Pinsel will be, I don't know if it's a George Boating or a Didi Dramani. Um, that appointment does not appear to have gone down with the general public very well. I've just been monitoring sentiments across platforms. Um, anyway, let me start with you uh, first and foremost. What did you make of it when you first heard that Otuado was making a comeback? And again, when you heard the composition of the men that would be backing him? Look, um, when I heard the news, a couple of things stood out for me. Yeah positive things because this is what I've been calling for. Okay. First of all, a three year contract for the Black Stars coach. Okay. You can't treat the nat a national team like a club side. Okay. So that every single year you change managers. Yeah. So that was very in interesting to me, yeah. knowing that Because the, the FA Black have Stars, been short term yeah, with their managers contracts term. recently. Very short term. So it was encouraging that the next Black Stars coach was going to get a longer term to, mm -hmm. you know, set the side gets their philosophy into yeah. place and ensure the Black Stars played well. Second thing, that the new coach was going to bring in their own staff. Some people they are comfortable working with, people yeah. they can bounce ideas off yeah. because they know them, they know how mm -hmm. they think. Mm -hmm. That would make the squad work better. Mm -hmm. Then Joseph Lauman seems like an Otoado guy. <laughs> seems like an Otoado choice. That is fine. Yeah. Now we go to the person that has been brought. That is where I don't agree with. You look at the whole squad, the whole composition, from the head coach to the assistants. Mm. I Hold think on, we, let me get we, you right. So you say you like the modalities around the in terms modalities. of the contract The contract. Term, the fact that they are allowed to bring their own person. Brilliant. But the personnel itself. Look, if feels like we are treating the Black Stars as the Black Satellites. Mm. We are treating it as a team to, uh, for a coach to grow into. 
and that is not right. The Black Stars is the pinnacle of our football, as coach usually says. Yep. We can't treat it as the development ground for someone who has barely cut their teeth in the game. Especially for an employing body that said that they wanted 15 years of experience and a manager well-versed in developing players and reconstructing teams. Look, when I saw the criteria from the, from the GFA, I thought, well, this is ridiculous. We are not <laughs> going to get anybody with these qualifications. Yep. But at least it, it told me that, or it made me think mm -hmm. that the GFA was actually taking the Black Stars job quite seriously. Yep. And that we are not going back for maybe a Milo who has been with the Black Stars, so maybe mm -hmm. we bring him back. Yeah. Or an Avram Grant, or uh, uh, sorry to say, Kwesi Apia or yeah. Siki Akono. Yeah. That we're going for the high level coaches. Yep. People who had done the job, people who had been proven some, track record. Proven track record. Yeah. I was very encouraged. So, huh. and when they talked about, oh, accepting applications, so many applications had come in, it was a, it was a good sight because mm -hmm. you knew that the Black Stars was being taken seriously. The Black Stars deserve to be at the top of African football. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been there because we've been lax in our decision making when it comes to player se selection, mm -hmm. when it comes to coach selection. Yep. So I thought that at least we will get the coach selection right mm -hmm. and then we go to the player selection and try and get that right too. Mm. But bringing back Otoado, first of all, his first stint in charge of the Black Stars, not the best. 33% win, uh, percent on his winning charts. Look, if he had won 70% of his games, mm -hmm. I'd have been encouraged and said that, okay, fine, we can overlook the fact that he doesn't have that much experience. He, he hasn't coached a proper side. But when he came to the Black Stars, he mm -hmm. actually showed something. Yep. He qualified Ghana to the World Cup based off what? A draw. Two draws. Two draws. Two draws. I mean, Not even a win. In, in, the, in the context I, I of the situation, the Ghanaians were elated because we're elated. we got to qualify for but the But thinking Cup. about it, it's two draws. At the World Cup, fine. We may have played some good football. But we still exited at the group stage. Yao said I, something crazy on Sports yeah. Panorama on Friday. It says Ghana conceded seven goals in the space of 13 minutes accumulated at the World Cup under his watch. Seven <laughs> goals in 13 minutes. And that is a problem that has it preceded him and it succeeded him. Nobody has been able to solve it. Mm -hmm. It was a problem that mm -hmm. existed before mm -hmm. him. He didn't solve it and it's moved on to uh, other managers yep. or other head coaches. Bringing him back, it doesn't solve any issue. Is it that is he a disciplinarian? Is he a good tactician? I didn't see that when he was in charge. Hmm. Does he have an eye to scout uh, young talent? Maybe that's why he's been at the job at Dortmund for quite a while. Yeah. Then make him a scout. Let him go and look for players for the national team. Don't hmm. put him in charge of the national team. He might go on and do a good job. Yeah. That is how football is. He might go on and start getting results and everyone will look at this tape and say, look, you spoke too soon. Mm -hmm. But my point is, put your team in a position where they have the best chance to succeed. Yeah. Is Otoado being in charge, uh, John Pencil being assistant, Fatah Odada being goalkeeper coach, Laman being part of the team. Is it the best chance for Ghana to succeed? I don't think so. Hmm. I don't think so. Well, um, Coach Edwin has said a lot. You um, are also a convener for Save Ghana Football. Um, who, who have, you've already gone on a demonstration to uh, protest the happenings at the AFCON and generally the state of football in the country. A statement has been released um, questioning the appointment of Otoado, his backroom staff, and also uh, making certain demands. So you talk about asking the ministry and the FA to make public uh, or to others remuneration and also how much they paid to Dortmund because he is under contract, yeah. meaning that we need to pay compensation to get him out of that contract to come and coach Ghana. Those are very uh, valid questions. You also did mention that we needed to see a technical report on the AFCON before we went ahead to do any form of hiring recruitment. How have you taken in all of what has happened in the last 48 hours? Because you and I were on radio when the news broke. Um, how have you digested all of it in the aftermath? Okay, Tia, I have to control myself. You have to. To be able to I'm deliver. Today, today, I'm here to do <laughs> yeah, that yeah. for you. I will deliver Thank whilst you. I control Thank myself. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know what fraud is. 
<laughs> oh, don't laugh. That's country. <laughs> fraud. When you say this is a fraudulent act, do you know what that is? No. So let me explain why mm -hmm. the appointment of Otto Ado mm -hmm. is fraudulent. Tell me about it. How can you set up criteria? Mm -hmm. And the one who does not even meet one of one single one criteria. The FA is on record to have said that Otuado did not even apply for the job. Yes, that is the that is the second point why it is a fraud. Hmm. The man does not meet even one. You mean of it's a sham, complete complete sham. No, but we know what those things are. It hmm. is what it is. Hmm. Unless you don't want to be honest. Hmm. I have already tagged the people at the FA as dishonest people. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, I am being proven right. The people of this country who are watching this program mm -hmm. are being proven right. The man does not meet one of the requirements. Fraud act number one. Two, he didn't apply for the job. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that on record. Told the chairman of the committee, the committee that we, the, 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 the same Ghana football Petitioners have said that His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuado, mm -hmm. the minister, mm -hmm. please dissolve that committee because the sort of respect that should have been shown to the people of this country mm -hmm. by this FA, after our shambolic performance at the AFCON, they didn't show it to us. So there wasn't the need to be in the heads to appoint mm. any coach. He didn't dissolve the committee. You allow the committee. Let me just ask you this, though. I mean, in the in the context of everything happening, mm -hmm. qualifiers coming, friendly matches to be played, what would have been the practical thing to do in the, the absence of not having a coach? The practical thing that we should have done. Mm -hmm. There isn't the need to get involved in any friendly game. Mm -hmm. Let's put it out there. Okay. It is not every country in the world that will be playing friendly come next weekend. True. You should first of all understand your situation mm -hmm. and take decisions that will help, that will help you what overcome the problems that we are facing mm -hmm. so our main target is the match against mali in june that is what we should be thinking if we have talked about that yeah we wouldn't have encouraged this fraud to continue look mm. you spend millions of dollars on these people and every now and then they turn around and they insult us fraud number three you have gone ahead to appoint an assistant coach mm -hmm. who has always been coaching the feeder side of clubs that you have put on his CV. The Joseph Lehman man, they should mention one team that he's even coached at the national level. When I said that, in the national mm -hmm. league, mm -hmm. it has never happened before. As we speak, He's the under-16 coach of Standard Liège. Again, mm -hmm. fraud number four. You have appointed John Pencil, somebody who himself is not even qualified to coach in the Ghana Premier League. Yep. Per your own requirement to as mm -hmm. Ghana Football Association. Mm -hmm. Per your own I, requirement. I remember this became a controversial issue when he was appointed Legon City. Exactly. Yeah, he had to and take a know, back seat. And do you know the mm -hmm. icing on the cake? Mm -hmm. This is a man who faked a calf license A certificate. I'm stating it on record. He's it's, my it's, colleague. In, it's in the statement. I it's in the same Ghana He is my colleague. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. He faked his calf license A certificate only for this same effort to draw his attention. Like, Young man, you are not a calf license A coach. If you go hmm. through all the qualified license A coaches yep. in Ghana, you are not you part. Are not part. Yeah. So you better withdraw from being the head coach of what? Lagos Cities. Goodness me. For the sake of God, Keto Kreku Oto Ado and Co. If you, if you fear God, there are certain things you don't do. Especially when you mm. have the most precious jewel of a country being put in your hand to run or to take care of. You don't do that. So there's everything fraudulent about what they have done. Look. I don't hate Otuado, but like Edwin rightly said, he's definitely not the man for the job. This man showed this country gross disrespect, I repeat, mm -hmm. gross disrespect when after 
qualifying Ghana to the Mondial, when we went to the Mondial, let people get this straight too. Mm -hmm. Every dime of a dollar that was deserving of Otto Ado for qualifying Ghana, he was given. Yep. When we went to the Mondial, after taking $200,000 as appearance fee, because whatever the players took, the head coach takes what? Times two. Each player $200,000. After taking $200,000. The last World Cup? Yes, the last World Cup. After taking two hundred thousand, we know that for a fact. The players, oh. we know that management members, every player, I'm my not, boy I, was I, part I, of I'm, the team. I'm, not sure about I'm putting it on record. Mm -hmm. My player is part of the team. Mm -hmm. Every player, mm -hmm. including the management, two hundred thousand. Otuado took times two of that amount. That has never been in doubt. After mm -hmm. taking that money, he sat at the press conference and disrespected Ghana. He said, "Come on, the Black Star job is not even lucrative enough." to compel him, Otuado, to bring his family to come and stay in Ghana. Therefore, he could tell the whole world, mm -hmm. after the game against, was it? I'll ask him. After Uruguay. the game against Uruguay, yeah. he was going back yeah. to continue his role as what? Trainer scout for Borussia Dortmund. Goodness me. For the sake of this program and where we want to go, mm -hmm. I have to pause here. Tomorrow, Ghana will be interested. We will not allow the minister, His Excellency Nanado Danko Akufuado, Papa, <laughs> what, we, what the GFA people are telling us. Listen, look, this is what they are telling us. They are saying the president of the land called Otuado. So Nanado, His Excellency, is in support of this appointment. The minister mm -hmm. is in support of this appointment. Mm -hmm. Look. If you are doing something and the people of Ghana say, please don't do it. It is not sinking. It is not going down mm -hmm. with the people of Ghana. If you push it through, you've already failed. And for me, I know, like Edwin have said, mm -hmm. I, have, I share your sentiment 100%. We are already four decades behind the Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire won the cup mm -hmm. in 2015. Mm -hmm. Nine years after they won it again. Uh -huh. We won it in 1982. <coughs> yeah. 42 years down the lane, we've not won it. If we want to win it, this is not a mid... With this mediocre, incompetent technical team, we don't win it. Ghana will be interesting from tomorrow. They shouldn't push us. But from where the way things are going, they will hear from the safe Ghana football hmm. people from tomorrow. What I find curious is that if you put out a criteria to hire a manager and maybe at some point in the journey, the criteria changes. You need to announce that change criteria. And let me put because this not, because uh, what that does is it allows coaches who did not think they were eligible for the first criteria to be able to put in their entry. And let That's me put it on record. Mm -hmm. We had over 600 applicants. Mm -hmm. Five of them were shortlisted. Yeah. All those five met the criteria. The whole thing changed when Keto Kreku called Otoado. Otoado is Keto Kreku Mano. That must be made perfectly clear to the people of oh, this country. That, that, that's how come he came yes, in as caretaker boss the first Otoado time. He called Otoado and said, Oto, who made you Mano? You don't want the work. Did you hear the conversation? I'm telling you. Look, <laughs> you see? Then, I'm telling you what happened. Mm -hmm. Then, he went to Mark Addo, who is the chairman of the search committee, mm -hmm. that Otto is interested in the job. So you people should interview him. Then Otto applied. The amazing thing is that when we were demonstrating on the 14th of last month that's to save I, Ghana football... I, allegedly, that's that, when he was being interviewed. Allegedly. That's when he was interviewed. That was the day he was being interviewed for the job. We are leaving them to the... Val's Day time. special. We, we, <laughs> we, will, we will make sure we will do what we need to do to save... I have said... That if they don't take care, we'll help them destroy the game. Because the actions don't, they are taking... No, you can't destroy no, the game. You, we you, will help. You, 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 have to, you, you have to protect the game. No. No, don't do that. We, in protecting the game, mm -hmm. if the decision makers mm -hmm. are making such decisions, who am I? I don't make decisions. I'm here to do my work as an ordinary Ghanaian mm -hmm. to prompt them. That don't go here. Don't go here. Your record mm -hmm. shows mm -hmm. that you are associated with failure. You failed. And from the government of the MP, I'm shocked. Since you came to eight years, what has the blasters achieved? Last, last, last. Let me talk about the African. You game. don't have what anything I, to show. Like I always say, decisions. Hey, the FA, the FA 
should know that they have hired Otto Ado more times than they've won AFCON games, yes. like I've said. Not, not, not <laughs> AFCON triple, but AFCON games. They, one game yep, like this, yep. one they've game. Had, <laughs> they've hired Otto Ado twice. They are yet to win an you AFCON are, you've, game. You've not won the one game at AFCON. As Let's every. talk about the African games briefly. Um, let's check out the medal table because Team Ghana were up to a few shenanigans in arm wrestling. So 40 medals in arm wrestling. Boy, we are up to sit on the medal table. Look at Egypt. Look, just look at Egypt. Nine, Egypt have 90 gold medals. Wow. Egypt have more gold medals than we have medals in total. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's what they're doing. 154 is what they are currently on. Um, as far as the games itself uh, are concerned, um, Abeku Jackson and Co won medals. Uh, Winnie Fred and Tumi uh, picked up medals as well. Um, Ghana is hoping to compete in track and field from tomorrow, uh, so that should be interesting. Azamati, Joseph Polamwa, and Co all competing. And then there's basketball. In the mm -hmm. track and field, we want to tell Azamati and Co mm -hmm. if you know you are not fit, don't come there. We don't want to see anybody <laughs> doing this. <laughs> We don't want to see that mm. because this is a clear case of we being able to win. We are yeah. capable of yes. winning medals. So if you know, I, I think they are off it. So, so so far, those who are in camp, they are off mm. it. We've been there. From what I'm hearing, no, no, the people who are not fit, they won't compete. So you, that's what if, if that's you want the point to I make. If you're yes, not fit, if you're not fit, don't you won't compete. There. Those who want to catch up with uh, some behind the scenes exclusives, what the athletes have been up to, what they've been saying, get to City Sports GH on YouTube. Uh, Bernard Issa Osei was out there on the field talking to um, Ignatius Geyser, spoke to Joseph Polama, Azamati, um, Shoneke and Co. So lots of exclusives on track and field. It starts tomorrow. We'll be on the ground to give you all the updates. Basketball starts tomorrow as well. So uh, lots of interesting stuff happening. Boxing has been happening. I think boxing is still ongoing. Samuel Techi uh, disciplined his opponent earlier today. Uh, I think he's through to the quarters or the semis. I'll verify that for you before the show ends. But Edwin, just snap thoughts on the African games quickly before we move it on. Look, the narrative, especially this week, and I believe it's false, mm -hmm. is that we've not been supporting it enough yeah. positively. Look at you even Look, here. I'm even in yeah. the African games shit yep. to give my support to yep. it. But the sentiments coming from the athletes is not good. Yeah. What they are talking about in terms of the supports they received, the talk that has been going around them, mm -hmm. is not motivating them to compete True. for for the nation. So I guess maybe we need to be more positive in how we speak about the athletes, but we also need to push their their agenda as well. We need to ensure that they get what they need to compete. Because look, Abeku Jackson with the right preparation probably gets a gold medal. Mm. Unilever's uh, Harry Stacy in the pool yep. probably get gold gold medals. Yep. Winifred into me probably gets more gold medals. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Next week we are looking at the athletics. We probably should win gold medals in that. As a Mati, I'm I'm expecting him to win the 100 meters. He's the best. Big expectation. He's the best sprinter. He sh he's the best sprinter on the continent mm. Mm. at the moment. And he should win uh, the gold at the, in the 100 meters. Did he get enough preparation? He's been in school the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yes, proper preparation. But are we giving him uh, enough support? Are we sending him to enough competitions for him to hone his talent, for him to compete against the very best? Mm. I don't think we are. The other team, team members, are we giving them enough support? I don't think we are. Mm. Arm wrestling... <laughs> the medals we are getting what do you, from there. What do you make of that feat, though? Like Ghana look, picking up 40 in arm wrestling. Look, if you're in competition, you go into it to win. <laughs> so the fact that we've won those medals, oh, brilliant. Man. Is it going to be at the Olympics? Nope. No, it's not going to be at the Olympics. That is the ultimate. That's the pinnacle for any hmm. athlete. Competing in a sport, that's going to be at the Olympics. So I'm happy for them. But I think a little more focus should be given to the sports that are that's going to give us the most uh, what pedigree the most mm -hmm. prestigious presti awards. the prestigious yeah. awards Track. going to the olympics yeah. going to the world championships mm -hmm. getting us all those prizes i think that's where our focus should mm. be but congratulations to them you're going to have any yeah. tournament to hoping win. to win yeah. and they've done so congratulations to the arm wrestling team congratulations to uh, i mean team ghana and Generally, all the athletes competing at the games is not easy, especially in the face of all the constraints that you face. Uh, I think you guys have already done immensely well to have 
I mean, even uh, got into this state. So congrats to all of you out there. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, I'll read some of your messages, and then we'll get into some European football. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Let's start off with the English Premier League and let's get into the action right away. Fulham Football Club were at Craven Cottage when they hosted Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham had gone away and beaten Aston Villa, so this was supposed to be a little more routine. But Spurs have shown that nothing is routine for them this season. Let's get into the highlights. Ah, Tottenham Hotspur. Edwin, your friends were at it again. They were. They were. It's, it was... A Spurs performance, typical of <laughs> what we've seen from them this season. It was uh, one step forward, two steps back. And Postecoglou was asked the same question, whether he mm -hmm. felt that after such a huge win over Aston Villa, coming back mm -hmm. against Fulham and losing was a huge statement. And he said no, it was one of those results that they can they will just forget about. And I don't think they can forget about this. 3-0? Yeah, it's a huge... Significant and you are chasing loss. top four football. You are chasing top four, uh, top, uh, four top football. Five. Top, five. top five. He was telling Tottenham fans last week that they can begin to dream about the Champions League. Exactly. And if you are expecting Champions League football, mm -hmm. you can't go out and defend in the way they did. I think Fulham looked at Spurs and counted all their flaws. Mm -hmm. One of their major flaws and one of Postokoglu's major flaws is pushing his wing or full backs forward quite a bit uh -huh. into attack. And Fulham recognized that, recognized the spaces that exist uh, behind those fullbacks. Yep. And all their passes were in the direction, on the wide sides, taking advantage of the overloads that they could create uh -huh. on those sides. So you could see that a lot of their chances came out from wide. Yep. Robinson on one side, uh, along with William. On the other side, they had, uh, I believe it was Pereira, or, uh -huh. yeah, one of those players all the balls into the box, trying to take advantage of the spaces Spurs left. And you've got to give credit to Rodrigo Muniz. He's had to buy this time at, at yeah. uh, Fulham. Uh, had to deal with Mitrovic being there. He couldn't break into yeah. the side. And then there was Vinicius, yep. Raul Jimenez. When they weren't scoring, he was thrown in as a last resort. And he's yeah, proven he to be he a very... taken his opportunity. Yeah, he's taken his opportunity. With the way he occupies defenders, yeah. he, he's actually built really... Uh, big, so he yep. can challenge the centre backs. He has some speed to him, and he's good with his feet as well. He can con look at his control for the first goal. Took it That's out. That's a of really his feet. good combination you are yeah, mentioning. Took it so out. So good physique, feet. strong guy to occupy, and good has, with his feet. Yeah, good he's with his got feet decent as well. pace. All the attributes yeah. of feet. pace, physique, the proper first touch. That should be like. Yeah. That's a good centre yeah. forward. Spurs, this can't continue. You can't win one game impressively and go lose the next really badly. <laughs> There seems to be no middle ground with them. And yep, yep. For, they are either good or they are, they are either really good or yeah. they are really bad. And we've spoken about this consistent yeah, and I think, balance. And I think it comes down to the coach. You see, at this stage of the season, what I don't like or what I hate are managers who don't understand their own situation. How can you play hmm. close to 30 games mm -hmm. and not admit to the fact that you've got a certain advantage that you need to at least protect. If things were to go your way, yep. whatever you, you said you wanted to achieve at the end of the season, you've gotten it. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to play against a Fulham side, they've been very good at home. Yeah. You don't have your best centre-back. That centre-back who practically allows you to play very high up the pitch is not in the setup mm -hmm. because of injury. Mm -hmm. You should be a bit pragmatic. For Stafoglu is virtually telling everybody that he's not a smart manager. It is this way. Philosophy to Whether I've got the men to it's do the it philosophy or not, to their death. No, but that is absolute <laughs> stupidity. Excuse me, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Philosophy to their death. No, but he Live got by it, die by it. And literally. if you look at all the goals, mm -hmm. they were virtually caught ball watching. And like Edwin rightly said, once the fullbacks went up, you could do that when the Dutch boy is in the thing. What's Van der Ven. Van der Ven. Mm -hmm. Because he... He, can, he has pace. Look, he can recover. The, he's the fastest centre-back in the league. Mm -hmm. I don't even think there's any centre-back as fast as he is That pace in the is world. ridiculous. Absolutely <laughs> blistering. Yep. And you want to have it in your team all day. Mm -hmm. So if he's not there, and you're asking the likes of Romero and Co to do that, they are not accustomed to doing those things. Nope. So you get beat. So for me, look, the way Villa and Spurs are behaving, I was telling Edwin earlier <laughs> on the day, 
they are gradually forcing their way to allow a certain thing that is not being managed <laughs> properly to believe that mention they can their get. Name, their name. I've stopped that thing, so I don't want to talk about them. Mention a certain name. Manchester United, <laughs> you, are, you see, they are behaving to get United. They're allowing United to dream sniff, of sniff the Champions League because again. It is the, five, the first five teams yeah. will qualify for the Champions League. And as we speak, Villa, fourth, Spurs, fifth, mm -hmm. United, sixth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. their last two games, or their last week and this week team, have given Manchester United. I think hope. Spurs will fall out of it. I've seen their fixtures leading up to the end of the season. Yeah, they're they, Villa. They have to play literally every serious team in yeah, the league leading City, up to the end. City, Liverpool, Pro, Arsenal. 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 <laughs> you pay they the have price. to play every. And all these teams too are going for the yeah, title. Yeah, it's it's a hard time for Spurs. But look, I like Poster Koglu. I like the high octane football. I like the high line. But you need to be smart at the point. I hope they can make the top four though. Um, at whose expense, though? That's another big question. Let's get to another game that uh, served up really good action. So this weekend, it was a mix of Premier League and FA Cup action. It was the FA Cup uh, quarterfinal. So the final four is decided. Um, first up over the weekend, it was Manchester City up against Newcastle. Newcastle were hoping to make it to another cup final. It didn't happen. Pep Guardiola is through sixth consecutive time. They made it to the semi-final. Let's get the highlights. So a couple of very wicked deflections there. Bernardo Silva getting both goals. He had himself quite a feast yesterday. And a quick thoughts on that one. So Newcastle stumbling again. Um, the, the losses are piling up. Yeah, but you might as well start calling this the Pep Guardiola competition. He's absolutely dominating it. Semi-final six, six times on the bounce. Six times on the bounce. But Newcastle, I expected them to give a better fight than they gave. Gave, uh, I thought City dominated them. They passed them off the pitch, especially in that first half. Newcastle couldn't get a foot near them. And you look at the two goals um, they conceded, mm -hmm. and you can see exactly why Dubravka was very upset. For the first one especially, yeah. Bernardo Silva picked the ball up about four yards outside the penalty area. Mm -hmm. He was allowed to walk and checked into the penalty area before taking the shot, which was deflected. It was... Particularly the same for the second goal. Yeah. He was left alone. And you can't defend like this, especially against Manchester City. It might not have been the free-flowing passing football mm -hmm. that led to those two goals. But when you allow them space, you are going to get these sort of moments. In the second half, Man City basically had the game uh, f for themselves. They only had to take their chances. Unfortunately mm -hmm. for them, they couldn't add to those two goals. I'm surprised Newcastle didn't make a bigger fight of this. Hmm. This was a, champ a competition that they had a good chance of winning. They don't yeah. have too much to play for. Out of the Champions League, yeah. they are out of the League Cup. They look the like Premier they will make the Champions League. In the Premier League, either. they look like they are out of that top four race. So this was a trophy for them to win. And it's, a, it's a way to Europe too. Yeah, and for a club that is at their stage, yeah. the thing that's left for them is a trophy. Sure. They've made it to Europe. Sure. They've made it into the top four. They are starting to look like a proper team. You have money now. You have Win money a trophy, now. Attract Win a trophy, bigger attract bigger name players. Exactly. And they fail to do that yet again. See, Newcastle, just take my advice and hire the special one, a.k.a. <laughs> the only one. Just, just hire him. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know about you guys. There's a, there's a school of thought and there's a growing sentiment that um, coaches like Mourinho are out of their depth these days as far as mo the modern day game is concerned. I beg to differ. Anyway, um, Newcastle, if you can hire Eddie Howe, you can hire Mourinho. I'm just saying. Let's go to more FA Cup action. Let's check out Chelsea Football Club. They were also up against Leicester City. Ghana's Fatal Isahaku was in the mix. It was not a very good day of football for him overall. I mean, we like to see him in there, but in the end, Chelsea triumph. Let's get the highlights. Nani Madueke, I see you. This was what you were supposed to be doing week in, week out, when you were bought from Eindhoven. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've only seen a glimpse of it. Coach, <laughs> let me start off with you. Your good friends were up to it again. Uh, Fatal Isaku is another guy you like very much. Yeah, um, today, he didn't have the best of games at all. Yeah, touch on his performance and touch on the Chelsea performance today. I think quickly, on the part of Fatal, is a day he will quickly want to forget mm. and crave another opportunity to go back there. And prove the how big good a player you play he the is. championship. Of course. You want a chance to play yeah. against Chelsea. And then show your true self because he was completely um, non existent. He gave the ball away for the Chelsea first goal, one. 
he conceded the penalty too, and uh -huh. we we're watching the match together. And I, what I really didn't understand from him was the fact that he never fancied himself one v one against a left-footed defender. You are left-footed. You are mm -hmm. playing on the right. Mm -hmm. There's a left-footed mm -hmm. player who is tackling you on the left. You should fancy yourself all day one v one against him. I thought and a little. He's, he's, he's very one-dimensional right. when it comes to yeah. occasions where all he needed to do was to believe he could take on Kukorea and Leicester would have gotten a better end product from that. Yeah. Rather, he chose to present the ball where the crowd always find themselves and he kept giving away, giving away. And for me, I w it wasn't surprising when the coach eventually took him uh -huh. Now, having said that, if mm. you go to the Chelsea performance, look, they nearly made this a difficult day. Let me get to Edwin. I think uh, there's a little issue with your microphone. We'll get to sort it out in a bit. But Edwin, just quick thoughts on that Chelsea performance. The positives out there for you. Well, uh, as coach said, Chelsea nearly made it a difficult game. Mm -hmm. They were 2 0 up and then missed chances to kill the game. And that's been a problem for Chelsea all season. The fact that they've not been able to kill off games. Mm -hmm. They had that penalty from Sterling. Yep. And Sterling had another chance, a couple more that they could have scored. And in the second half, De Sassi scores an own goal. And nervousness and we've talked about it all season every single game every single game they concede one mm -hmm. and nervousness just spreads through the whole team hmm. and the defense especially and once that happens the other team senses it yep they start pushing players forward and we see and we saw that wonderful goal from Mavididi but I think Pochettino made the right substitutions he brought the right players on maybe not taking the right players off but eventually he made it work by ensuring that he had width. And once Madweke came on, once Chilwell came on, they were able to spread play and move the Leicester defenders uh -huh. around and ensure that there was space for them to operate in, space for them to take advantage of. And once that happened, Kopama started operating in the gaps that were yeah. left. Chukwe Mecca found some space. Nicholas Jackson started moving from side to side. And eventually they got the goals. There are a lot of problems with Chelsea at the moment. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Mm. First, uh, go, short conversion. Yep. They are missing a lot, of, a lot of chances. A lot of great chances. A lot of great chances. And also, the defensive cohesion anytime they concede, mm. they just seem to lose any steadiness or is stability that, they have. Is that mental? Is that like a switch off or you think it's a tactical thing? No, it's definitely mental. I think. Over the course of the last two years, mm -hmm. a lot has happened to Chelsea in terms of their play. And the players feel it. They, they see their criticisms, they see their abuse, mm -hmm. and they wonder if the next time is going to be them. So once a goal goes in, yeah. once there's a feeling that yeah. they might lose it, once yeah. there's a feeling that they might, they might be shocked hmm. and they might face the hate, they just lose their focus, lose their heads, and eventually they concede it. Today, the co coach made a number of tweaks that actually put them in a positive light, mm -hmm. help them win the game. But mm -hmm. as coach said, they almost made this very difficult for themselves. Talk to me about Cole Palmer. 16 goals, 12 assists this season. That's what I'm hearing. Um, eight goals in the league, um, about 11 assists uh, in, the, in the league as well. That's crazy because this guy is a youngster. He, I expected that Chelsea struggling, he would struggle as well because that's what happened to Kai Havertz. Mm. He struggled in a team that was struggling, but it looks like he's really taken to Chelsea or life at Chelsea real quick. What's been the secret for him or how? what have been like the factors that have propped him up in this system? Look, um, when he was signed by Chelsea... Uh, a lot of people weren't happy, especially with the price tag and same. The fact I, that, I was one of them. Yeah, you, you were definitely. Forty-five million was a but, lot for me, and it was a lot for a player who was a bit-time player at Manchester, Manchester City. Yep. But one thing I saw was him coming in. He saw a leadership gap in the mm -hmm. Chelsea team mm -hmm. that he could immediately fill. A lot of experienced players had left Chelsea, yeah. and he might not be the oldest, but under Pep Guardiola, he's definitely experienced a lot of wins, a lot of success. True. True. And under Pep Guardiola, you are definitely going to be a very disciplined player in terms of your press, in terms of how you approach yeah. games, in terms of your mentality. So he was coming into Chelsea, into a very young Chelsea and very inexperienced Chelsea team as probably one of the senior players. Immediately, he stepped True. into the team. So it was up to him to just show what he could uh -huh. do. 
and mm -hmm. the goals have certainly helped. The assists have certainly helped. Yeah. Obviously, he's taking a lot of penalties, but penalties help build you yep. your goal scoring rhythm, confidence, your confidence, yep. your momentum, yep. and it's helped him as a player. Oh, he's a fantastic player. He's able to operate within spaces. He's able to. Uh, take those split-second decisions yep. that a lot of other Chelsea players... Especially youngsters will take. Would, exactly. Um, there are lots of raw players around them. In Mudrik, in Nicholas Jackson, mm -hmm. even in midfield in Caicedo and Enzo. He is one player who studied uh, uh, under the master, under one of the best. Played around some of the best players in the world. Players that teach you how, mm -hmm. how and when to release the ball. Yeah. The right times to do so. And you don't come from such a system and not be as good as he has been mm. at Chelsea. And I think he's been an overwhelming success. 11 goals in the Premier League, 6 Crazy. assists. I think he has 16 eight overall. 8 assists in the Premier eight League. 8 assists in the Premier League. 16 overall. Mm -hmm. He's been a fantastic player for Chelsea. Lately. Fantastic indeed. So, um, 33 um, games and he's had 24 goal contributions. That's, wow. that's for Chelsea alone. So, wow. um the Young Player of the Year award is going to be interesting. Um, he is in there. Um, I pick up that Bukayo Saka is still eligible. <laughs> that makes it very uh, interesting as well. So um, very interesting um, days ahead as far as the league is concerned. But Chelsea, I'm sure Kopama has been a silver lining for them in what has not been a really happy season. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get into uh, the tactical board. We'll dissect that Liverpool versus Man United game, how the goals were scored, who was doing what and who was sleeping on the job. Stay with us here on Scorecard. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Um, I'm, we're experiencing some challenges getting you messages basically because of all the internet struggles that have occurred in the past couple of days. And so uh, that's why we haven't read your messages. But we are going to the tactical board. Every time Manchester United take on Liverpool, it's a blockbuster. This was another serving in the process and so um, it had everything crazy goals um, late goals extra time it was the FA Cup quarterfinals Man United triumphed uh, via a late Ahmad Diallo goal let's get to the highlights and then we'll get to the touch part absolute pandemonium in the stands Old Trafford went ballistic it was 120 plus one so you can imagine uh, the kind of feeling or what the feeling was like in the crowd there United Love nothing more than beating Liverpool, trust me. They probably love it more than beating Manchester City. So it's one of those games where um, Ahmad Diallo, everything came together for him. Coach, let's check out the uh, board. Take us through um, the goals and um, the talking points in there. Exactly. So this is by far the biggest game in England. Mm -hmm. you, may, you may take it, you may hate it. Historically, may, it is what it is. The present, right. everything, yeah. So, seven goal trailer, isn't yeah, it? Seven yeah, seven goal. We had a seven goal trailer, but look. Most of the goals could have been avoided. Hmm. For the neutrals like myself, yeah. I enjoyed every <laughs> bit of it. Now let's go I to like, the first. I like goal. the sound of that. Of the neutrals like yourself. Like myself. <laughs> I enjoyed every bit of hmm. it, isn't it? Now, let this roll and then I'll point out the deficiency in the hmm. Liverpool defending that led to this very first goal. It hmm. must be said, like mm -hmm. my United started the game very, very well. The first eight to ten minutes yeah. belonged to them. They, they, they had a certain tempo, mm -hmm. and it was prudent that they scored from that. Now, let me pause it here. Now, when you look at this, Liverpool had no defensive issue at all. They were properly in line. Mm -hmm. So, the <coughs> right back, which in this case was Gomez, yeah. or Kwanzaa has been drawn into from a centre-back role onto the right back. Mm -hmm. So he had done excellently well against Marcus Rashford. He showed him the bar line. Rashford realized that by going to the bar line, mm -hmm. he was going to his weaker foot. So he checked back. And then he gave the ball to Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes paused it here. This is where it was absolutely kindergarten from Liverpool. Now watch. These two lads, mm -hmm. these two lads, I'm referring to Gomez and I think, I think Endo, the two Liverpool players Kwanza. you see there. Mm -hmm. I think that's Gerald Kwanza. That's a Kwanza. Yeah. So Gomez and Kwanza. Mm -hmm. Now, they could see Marcus Rashford, one, but they could not see Gainacho. Yeah. Nobody expected Gainacho yeah. to be here. Yeah. Because by the tactical way, 
he was playing on the right. Mm -hmm. So this is what, as coaches, you want to encourage. So he has come all of, the way out of his position the into the box. Into the box. So nobody is picking him, is up. Picking him up. Even his direct marker, mm -hmm. who is what? Robertson, mm -hmm. has been caught in between whether to follow Guy Nacho or to show proper awareness of what? Rashman Schorlein. Mm -hmm. But in this case, Rashman Schorlein too is keeping both Van Dijk and Robertson very, very busy. Yep. Van Dijk saw the move. But the gap between the two of them, posted here. Now, look at the gap between Virgil van Dijk and Guy Nacho. Look at the gap here. All this place. And <laughs> all Rashford needed to do mm -hmm. was to make sure he passed the ball in a way that would take off Kwanzaa mm -hmm. and Gomez out of the picture. Yep. Because in this case, <coughs> once the ball went past the two of them, they were passive. Yeah. And that would mean that van Dijk would have been drawn out of position. Now, once the pass went, van Dijk... Contempt, do I go? And of course, McTominay, this is United what... He even had an extra man there if McTominay wasn't there. This is what McTominay is good at. Get into the box. Yep. Get arriving, the arriving end, in the but box. But to be part of the move, he's completely non-existent. So mm. this was the first goal. It was kindergarten defending from Liverpool and they paid for I, it. I like how these things break down because... Like, a lot happens so quickly. So like quickly. one moment, you are your defensive shape looks solid. The next couple of seconds, when once people go to sleep, yeah. you are exposed. Now let's go to the McAllister goal. That is the Liverpool first mm -hmm. goal. Again, you allow it to roll. 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 But look, this is a repetition of something that happened some few weeks ago. Hmm. Now, Jurgen Klopp after this goal clearly congratulated Kwanza. Now. If you are Ten Hag, mm -hmm. you should be looking at Marcus Rashford and say, look, where was your desire? No desire whatsoever mm -hmm. to win the ball. You don't allow Kwanzaa. Everybody watch. This is Kwanzaa with the ball. This is Marcus Rashford. Look at where Kwanzaa is going to pass. He's virtually going to do a merry-go-round mm -hmm. around Marcus Rashford. Mm -hmm. At this level, Easy. knowing where you are, that cannot be allowed to happen. So if you roll this again, look at Kwanzaa. Look at Rashford. Look at him. Look at him. If you're holding him, pull him there and, he's and stop the play. Back. And that is one of Liverpool's centre backs. How Again, you, how you let the centre back come all the way there and run rings around, around you? Around you like that. Yeah. He wouldn't have allowed you to do so. Yeah. So you also don't allow him to. So that was again very elementary on the part of Marcus Rashford. So the second goal was gone. Now let's go to the third goal. Hmm. Now the third goal is Liverpool's second goal of the game, yeah. and that goal was scored by Mohamed Salah. Salah. Look. Truth be told, this was a problem created by Manchester United insistence that they wanted to build from the back. I don't envy Wan-Bissaka here because he's right-footed. He's been asked to play on the, on the left. He did very well. Look at the situation there. It's a very tight situation. He's been pressed, he's been pressed by two Liverpool players. Yeah. So it's two things. Either impression. he goes mm -hmm. to throw mm -hmm. or... He locate a Manchester United player. And for me... He can I go to corner too. He, he, he could go to corner and allow the team to and then put a defensive shape and defend. But he didn't do that. Now, he gave the ball to Bruno Fernandes. Once the ball got to Bruno Fernandes, this is what Bruno didn't do too well. This capture is not showing it exactly what was wrong here. But Bruno, in controlling the ball, mm -hmm. should have put his body in between the ball and Gomez. He didn't do so. Mm -hmm. The control didn't stick with him. Mm -hmm. It went away from him. So all that Gomez did was to put his foot across Bruno, yeah. take charge of the ball, and recycle the attacking move for Liverpool. And that meant that, look at the shape of United. This is one of, this is my United, this is my United centre-back, one of the centre-back. This is Varane. Look at the gap between Rafael Varane and Lindelof. Unacceptable. So, mm -hmm. already here, United mm. are struggling. They didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, look at what Liverpool did. They quickly saw that. Mm -hmm. They quickly realized that there was an issue. So, they pounced, like every good team would do. Mm -hmm. They pounced. Lindelof dealt with the cross. But because the shape was not what it should be, yep. United was never going to recover from that defensive error. They were scrambling to get scrambling. back. They were yeah. hoping that the ball would drop for one of them to just kick mm. it away and make sure they come back to their shape. So again, another unfalls defensive error and they pay the price for that. Now let's go to the next goal. The next goal, I think... Anthony? We, we, yes, Anthony. This is where, <laughs> if you are a good player... The darling boy, Anthony. 
I, I, I still do think he's very young, mm -hmm. and therefore he should be given enough time. To develop. Yes, the price tag is huge. Mm -hmm. Now, let's let this roll for the first time, then I'll come back and pause it again for the second time. Okay, let's, let's wait a bit. No, I don't want this. I think it will, okay, then it will, I have to go. We just rerun again. Just re let's okay. run that back again. Now let's run that back. I think McTominay did so well, but when the ball broke loose, this is where, look, credit must be given to Alejandro Gainacho. I think he had a wonderful game today. Fantastic. He, he, he worked for one. Did you see how, how he was running at 120 20 minutes? minutes? That was crazy I for me. It. Yep. Look, good players are told, especially good yeah. wingers, they are told. If you're a winger, I highlighted what. Fatal Isaiaku was not doing mm -hmm. right. Anytime the ball is given to you, fancy that 1v1 one one Run situation. at your opening. Run right? at that fullback. And that was exactly what Garnacho did. So he ran at the fullback. But credit must be given to the young chap, Bradley, who had come on for Gomez at this stage. Now, the beauty here is that the, Liv the entire Liverpool team are aware that Anthony is it's extremely left-footed. Left Nobody thought that he would actually that he would check and turn onto his right, right foot and to hit the ball. But look, he's Brazilian. Yeah. You may like him, you may hate him. It is always within the DNA Instinct. of Brazilian yeah. players that yeah. look, when they find themselves in very tight situations, they are not English. He, he, They've he, got the wish to he, he turn can, he, can, he can do the unexpected. Exactly. Hey, don't laugh. <laughs> 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 You see, they've got the ways to turn themselves in, diff in difficult situations. So he did that, and he brought the ball onto his right foot, and then bang into the back of the net. That actually changed the complexion of the game. This game, again, I must emphasize, mm -hmm. shouldn't have gone to extra time. We don't have that highlight there. Rashford had a beautiful assist yep. cooked for him by Christian Eriksen. All he needed to do was to plant the ball in the back of the net, hmm. and he didn't do that. Then the game went into extra time. Now, in the extra time, Look, you could feel the fatigue in the, in the legs of these players. This is the Liverpool third goal score by Elliot. Tactically, there wasn't anything that much to worry about, mm -hmm. but the fact that the ball had what, a wicked deflection, that took it away from Andre Onana, who had a beautiful game. There you go, Elliot control one, and then he just went for it. Deflected off Christian Eriksen into the back of the net. So there isn't too much to worry about here. Mm. You want to credit Elliot for giving it a try. Yeah. In a game of football, there are certain things. If you don't try them... You don't you expect would... your opponent to shoot from that foul. Exactly. Mostly. It will not happen. Now, the problem now started when Liverpool thought they were cruising. They were winning the game in extra time. Look at this. Everybody watch here. This is... The goalkeeper caught the ball, mm -hmm. and then he threw the... I think he, he, he took the right decision, decision by going out wide to Darwin Nunez. Now, look at the number of options Darwin Nunez had. If you're a Liverpool player or coach, you should go ballistic. He could have just given the ball back to Semikas. Mm -hmm. But look at what he did. He decided to force the ball where there were no way. Now, as he was forced infield by... Mark, look at what that... The ball got intercepted by Gives McTominay. The away. For the very first time in so many times, McTominay gave an assist to Marcus Rashford. <laughs> Let it be made very clear. All Rashford needed to do was to pick his spot. Mm -hmm. And that was exactly what he did. And then that brought the game to 3-3. Three, three. The most important goal, in my view, that Jorgen Klopp will be absolutely ballistic about was the last goal that Liverpool conceded. Look, this is you at Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. It is the FA Cup quarterfinals. The semifinals is at stake. Yep. In the last minute of <coughs> extra, time. extra time, you win a corner kick. You were not losing the game. You only do this when tactically you are losing, you are losing the game. You throw everybody you forward. You throw everybody forward. Yes, you may argue that every Man United player, outfit player, were all in the box. You can count... All the United players in the box, 10 of them, including Onana, mm -hmm. 11. So they were all in the box. So Liverpool may say there were justification to, to do what they did. But normally, mm -hmm. when the ball breaks loose and you don't win that second ball, mm -hmm. you are completely out of defensive shape. And when the counter-attack is on, you are hoping that somebody may come to your rescue. So when Liverpool had the corner and the ball was drew, McTominay headed the ball out. Look at, between Luis Diaz... And, and Elliot. Elliot. Yep. They bumped into each other. And that allowed Ahmad to quickly rush on Elliot, dispossess him, and look at who the ball fell to. 
you didn't want the ball Ganacho. to go to Ganacho because even at this stage, crazy he was pace. running than any that, other player that, that on the pace pitch. at 120 minutes. So now look is at it. Crazy. This was the vet, the last minute of it. But look at the pace. These are all young boys. Yep. And Ahmad, look, the, the Ganacho pass yeah. technically was a bad pass. Lacked yep. the weight. It was a bad pass. And the, the precision, the ball should have gone in front yeah. of Ahmad. And if you look at the Liverpool defender, he thought Ahmad would give it back to Ganacho. But he now Forgotten that he He's was left also left footed, so yep. preferred it. And all he needed to do was to drag that. Watch that again. Liverpool, look at look at that. Lack that of communication. Like, it's my ball, it's, it's my it's ball. ball. Who, yeah. who take charge of the situation? And then he went for it. And, and that's what did really well really to have well. let the ball and go for me, at the exact time. This is what, if you are a player, you need to be told. On such plays, uh -huh. do you go first ball or do you go last ball? I think if he had gone first ball, the goalkeeper would have made a save. Uh -huh. So all he needed to do was to drag it across. And you saw that the goalkeeper couldn't even move at all. And another thing that he did well technically, mm -hmm. he didn't give the ball any height. I, if he had given the ball any form of height, mm -hmm. the keeper would have saved it. But the ball was on the, on the turf. So yeah. by the time the goalkeeper would adjust his body, go down. Already, it's already gone. He didn't strike the ball that well. Nope. The ball lacked proper power. But it had but a lot of direction. it had the proper Quality on it, on it, yep. it ended up in the back of the net. So Liverpool, look, they I think have he had this. a lot of work to do to finish. This. Exactly. That, was, that was a really good. That goal. was a very good thing. And Liverpool had every reason uh -huh. not to have lost this game. Look, at some point in time, we were doing the game on radio, yeah. and it was clear that they were overly comfortable. Yep. If it is not done, you stick to the game plan uh -huh. and finish the job. They decided not to, and they paid the price of not being in the semi-finals against Coventry. Uh -huh. My United will play Coventry. Chelsea will play Man City. I think on the 20th and yep. 21st yep. of next month. Big game. So the semi-final set. Um, United up against Coventry. Uh, Chelsea up against Manchester City. That should be a cracker. Who goes to the final? We'll bring you updates. Let's get more highlights. Um, let's go on to the Serie A. And let's do Verona versus AC Milan. And then we'll also do Dam starts taking on Bayern Munich. So back-to-back -back highlights. We'll come back in the studio and discuss. So Bayer Leverkusen still unbeaten, gradually, gradually walking towards that title. It's crazy, but they are doing it, unbeaten. Yeah, and they are finding every single way to win. Hmm. Even in games where they are pushed to their yep. most extreme points, yep. they still find They, they have to, to dig deep they to get the results in this deep, game. Uh, to get a result. And I think the last three or four mm -hmm. weeks, they mm -hmm. are starting to falter a bit in terms of the goal scoring. And I think the, I think the, the gap between win them win and it. Bayern helps them out when they when they have to compose and themselves. So if Bayern were breathing down their necks with one point, yeah. I think it would have complicated their situation a lot more. And they put themselves in that position. They kept winning games. Mm -hmm. They kept mm -hmm. uh, getting into uh, getting results where they would be so many points ahead of Bayern. And Bayern are the ones struggling yep. to get there. I think Bayern have already given up on the title. They are just enjoying their football, trying to get as many goals as they can. Hmm. Focusing on the Champions League yesterday. Yep. And it was a good win for them. But yet again, conceding. They always go into games and you know that they are going to concede a goal. That's been their problem all season. I'll take Coach's thoughts in a bit. But let me read a few messages and then I'll let Coach conclude for us on the highlights that we've just seen. So um, this one here is from Lee Fosu from Suhum. says, I vehemently support any demonstration against the GFA. Stay blessed. Um, this one says, good evening. Doche Van Bright says, Dan Gote, uh, Doche Van Bright, Dan Gote from Volta region. Uh, oh, he says, I think today Man United have done well, uh, and I wish Hurricane speedy recovery. Arsenal is our wife. Okay. <laughs> Dawson inside that so man. He says, please tell coach that nothing is sweeter than beating Liverpool. Um, this one is from Danny from Michelle Com. Um, he says, let coach help me understand the philosophy behind defenders moving backwards when under attack. To what extent is a defender supposed to move back uh, if it's a good practice? I think if he has that, yeah, he can I just touch on that. Next time, I will teach them. But normally, when the defense is very stretched, uh -huh. and you are the only person. Uh -huh. You don't dive into the tackle. Because once you go and you don't win the ball, you, you have are, exposed you. So you tend to backpedal to delay and... Try and see if your teammates can, can come and join you. Mm, that is mm. the essence of that. Basically, a uh, very simple explanation there. Uh, Brookman coming through uh, says that on this note, I would like to extend my well wishes to the people of Ghana, the black stars and the GFA. My hope is that Otwado will be granted autonomy to act according to his own judgment 
free from influence from the FA or external sources. I made a decision to limit my intensity of support for the Black Stars. I have maintained my peace of mind and emotional well-being since. Interesting. Uh, this one is from uh, D from Kumase. It says, uh, why is Freezy McBones not contesting in this all-important African Games? I need some explanation. Freezy didn't qualify when he went to the um, little qualifiers they had around, uh, I think I think they traveled for the first bus of qualifiers he uh, flunked out. So that's why I think he's recoiled and he's going back to fight a few professional bouts. This one here, um, coming through, let me read a couple of them. Elon from Tema says, I actually thought we learned something from the previous AFCON tournaments, but it's clear um, people's general interest still reigns supreme over um, the many benefits football brings to us as a nation. A cat from Dan Suman says, Fine evening, City Sports. Noni Madwek has goal today against Leicester. Uh, City is the goal of the FA Cup round so far. I agree. Um, this one here uh, says, Good evening, scorecard team. We're enjoying the show here in the Upper East. What is happening to Kotoko? I really want to see Chelsea versus United in the FA Cup final. I want to find out which team coach will support when Chelsea plays United in the FA Cup final. I don't well. like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> You mean you can't be bothered by both teams? I watch like, as a neutral. I like how you said as a neutral. As a neutral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's so funny. Let's just wrap it up, guys. Um, in conclusion, uh, messages have come in. United are heading to the FA Cup yeah. uh, semi finals. Um, Manchester City are back there again. Real Madrid look like they will win La Liga. Yeah. Leverkusen I, 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 also looking like they will win their title. They win the bonus Liga. No two ways about that. I expect Chelsea to beat Man City, mm -hmm. and I think they will beat Man City at the third time of action. Hmm. Because it's like Poch has got the team properly set up yeah. to beat Man City. I think the 4 4, the 1 1 are a testimony of the fact that if Chelsea can take their chances, I fancy them to beat. As for mm. United against Coventry, you have to be in the final if you are turn hard. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm. Mm. Anyway? Yeah, I think United fans shouldn't underestimate Coventry. Obviously, United stars are huge favorites. Yep. But what I saw from their game against hmm. Wolves tells me that this is a very determined side that wants to make it. You don't get to the semi-final by chance. Exactly. They were down 2-1 in the 90th minute. Mm -hmm. 90 plus. They scored and twice. And they scored twice against a Premier League side away from home. And this Wembley, a neutral ground, mm -hmm. support is basically 50-50. Mm -hmm. yep. So you never know what a championship side might just pull up in such a situation. And Coventry are a very traditional side as far as English football is concerned. So best believe that their fans will be out there in their numbers as well. The FA Cup is set up nice. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you very much, Edwin Kwakofi. Thank you very much, everybody uh, who tuned in to watch the show. A uh, special thank you to those of you who sent us messages. Same time next week, Scorecard will be back on your screens.